So, um, hi everyone. Anyone who's just joined, uh, this is Jet Junkies live on Air Live. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Andy. I'm obviously Stewie. This is G our GI Jones Andy over here. Um, right, so first question is Andy, you're obviously in the military, and not anymore. No. Um, but when you were in the military, um, obviously you went around the world, I assume, to different places. Yeah. Uh, the States, maybe, Canada, uh, Europe. So, for example, when you go into, like, say, the States or Canada, how, how would you get there? Where would it start? Would you be at somewhere like Bryce Norton? Yeah, we always went from Bryce Norton. Line? Okay, Bryce From Bryce Norton, we, uh, we used to go on a TriStar, Army TriStar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, there's no, there's no frills, it's just no TVs or... <laughs> it's just, no no it's entertainment just, systems. No, no. It's it's no it's, choice of film. No, it's just trolley. But we were the, <laughs> we had the better option because the other ones were, were on the um, Hercules. Right. Yeah. And then they said, well, it wasn't too bad because all they used to do was sleep on top of the, uh, all the bags. <laughs> so they could actually lie down nice. over his bags. That, that was like the upper class, I guess, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> First class. First class. We'd go from Bryce Norton, and I assume, where did you fly to in those? Uh, uh, Calgary, I went to, um, we, we, well, well, our base was called Fort Wainwright, mm -hmm. and you landed at Calgary, yep. and then you get transported by bus all the way up to the the camp. Right. Okay. I guess they just herd you into these buses to get up there, <laughs> literally. With them. Yeah. Well, the uh, the training area is three times the size of Great Britain. Wow. Oh, so, so. Did they? We, did you have to unload the thing as well? No, no. It's all done by the frame staff. All right. So it's not too dissimilar from today's world. No, <laughs> really. <laughs> Pushes your luggage round for you as well. Jump on, jump off. Um, okay, that's cool. That's cool. So obviously you can you carry your weapons over there as well. Yeah. Really? On the tristar. Wow. Man, that was some fun up there when you've been on there for <laughs> seven hours. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. You take it. Get that annoying person kicking the back of your seat. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Gun, guns at dawn, one end of the air fuselage. Did you did you experience any other aircraft, helicopters, that sort of thing? I'd seen the um, parachute jumpers, they call them the PJs. Okay. Yeah. What's yeah. the PJs? PJs. Just for anyone who doesn't know. Um, basically, they wear red berries. And okay. Their first main job is ma air mountain rescue. Okay. And then they also do um, down pilot recovery. Mm -hmm. you know, like if a pilot gets shot down, they send the PJs out to get them. Oh, okay. okay. And they use either a UE back then mm -hmm. or. Um, What's a UE? Just for um, a UE one J, the um, you know the typical ones are used in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, they're very loud. They're about as loud yeah, as yeah. a Chinook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're, 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 right, yeah. it makes it easier to find people, I guess, because they can hear you coming, won't they? <laughs> that was a problem in Vietnam. They they could hear uh, hear the yeah, they hear it coming. They hear it coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so obviously you were over there, you were doing all those bits and pieces. When you were closer to home, maybe in Europe, uh, were you using any other kinds of aircrafts or, you know, maybe helicopters? Wing Wessex. Okay. Um, Chinook. Mm -hmm. Sea King. And what was your experience like with each of those? Let's start with the Chinook. Well, we went out to a place in the middle of um, Solvay Plain and they were doing like. Um, Show like when you, before you go to Ireland to deploy the Ireland, and show how to appreciate what's possibly ha could happen. And they, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they take you up so far, and then they cut out the engines. Wow. And then they stall the engine, and then they restart it. So, That's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, my I think my backside. Was <laughs> how far did you make it? How far did I drop? I couldn't tell. Yeah. And um, best one we were in uh, Ireland, and. Uh, Pilot, the low bass just goes like like pointing to everybody, and, and he jumped up, and the whole, as he dropped the aircraft, yeah, he, he was, was just he was just up in the air. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, we were, we all strapped yeah. down. I mean, did you see yeah, that? Yeah. Were you just all yeah, floating yeah. around? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, unless you got so much kit on. Yeah, that's true. I keep you down. Yeah. <laughs> so, what kind of kit were you carrying in in like the the Chinooks and stuff? Well, just or basic army equipment. Yeah. Uh, yeah stuff you need, you need for an operation depending on whether it's a three day operation or even longer okay. so your food um, cooking stuff um, your spare clothing or what you're talking another 80 pound on top wow. so that was enough to keep you there yeah <laughs> 
They had no trollers for that once you landed. No, no, it was no, on no, your no, back. Like <laughs> okay. Um, right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just quickly read out a few uh, questions. So, Jason Hodgkiss has asked a question. Um, do you know about the so-called stealth helicopter? Yes. You the one you use on the um, um, Bin Laden raid. Right, okay. Okay. Um, Can we go into more detail about it? Is that Comanche? No, 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 no. It was, it, was a, it was a Black Hawk. Um, oh, okay. st- Stealth capabilities. Yeah. When they when they blew it up, it was a p- rear section uh, was still left. Yeah. And they they were not worried about it being um, sold to the Russians. Um, Lee Russell asks, um, if you could sum up what aircraft meant to you in in the military, what would you say? Means of transporting your places. That's what it meant to me. That's it. It's A to yeah. B, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't matter how luxury or yeah. You know, it's just about getting from A to B, isn't it? To that question. So you you're talking about the the Chinook and stuff. Um, you were mentioning earlier to me about how there's different versions of Chinook. Yeah. Um, you were saying European, Ameri- European, and, and American, and American. So, um, obviously you've told me what the difference is. I'm not sure if Andy does, no. and I'm not sure if everyone yeah, obviously yeah. watching does. So do you want to explain what the difference is? Well, the difference is on the American one, they got a big cut hole, but size of probably about the size of that mat mm-hmm. um, apart so what about four feet square yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay and every time I went on it I was always perched over the hole <laughs> <laughs> what, did you lose a bet or something <laughs> no 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 it was, it was just lucky you just like <laughs> lucky. <you're right. laughs> lucky I would call that lucky. <laughs> right. and plus you've got your equipment on yeah and you've got your equipment on, on your back yeah and what's going to happen when you sat there? You you push over forward. Lean forward, and you think yourself, "I'm going to go at you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen a, a Chinook get dropped from a um, a Land Rover got dropped from a Chinook. Yeah, and that's because it was probably swinging about. Yeah, because the load master has the right to um, release the load. Yeah, is it whether a twenty grand uh, Land Rover or a five million pound helicopter? No, exactly. I can understand that. Mm. Um, okay, um, so you also went on a Lynx yeah. as well. What was that like? That's good. I think they used to hold the um, the world record on the um, helicopter's la- um, speed. Airspeed air record. Because oh. you had to take the um, different rotor blades off and put some special ones on there. Mm. More aerodynamic, probably mm. lighter, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and you also went on the TriStar as well when you were flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, w- did, would that have seats on it, or were you? Yeah, yeah, it's just like a normal, just plane, like a normal just, commercial airline. Yeah, but no, no frills and no, nothing. Not even, uh, not even lunch. Bar. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> we yeah, yeah, must have done because it's fair old way of car. It's thirteen hours. Nice no, Russian bag. Yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> so thirteen hours. Is that because you're flying to the other side of Canada, or such? Because it just flies slower. That's probably quite both. Old, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a long time on a plane, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and we were talking about Spitfires earlier, and we were talking about how uh, R.J. Michael, the guy who, R. J. Mitchell, R. J. Mitchell. Sorry, Mitchell, I might say, uh, he he obviously designed the Spitfire, but he unfortunately died before it actually went up and uh, used, when it was utilised. So he never actually realised yes, how successful the plane was. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a real shame, isn't it? 1937. 1937. 12,604 pounds unit cost. What for? For a Spitfire. For a Spitfire, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. So I've got a couple more questions. A, a favourite or a, do you have a favourite choice of aircraft to fly on? Lynx was the fastest. I, I always liked that going on that one because it's a firm platform and you didn't have much problems with that. I flew out most weathers I did. In World War Two area, we have talked about Spitfires. Uh, there's obviously um, hurricanes as well, which we also spoke about earlier. Was um, we were talking about stealth technology and how obviously obviously you know, we've obviously in the World War Two there was yeah. more hurricanes in the early in the Battle of Britain than yeah. Spitfires. Really, mm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay, really? so moving to stealth technology, obviously how we can get from A to B as quick as we can and, and pinpoint. Um, obviously in World War Two, um, it was a little bit different to that. You know, it was kind of like fly above, drop the bombs. If it's if it's around that area, fantastic. <laughs> it is kind of very much like that, it's isn't not it? Tough look. Um, but the the Germans in World War Two, towards the end of it, they actually started designing an aircraft which 
wouldn't be too dissimilar from today's um, kind of ideas and considerations, which was the Horton Ho, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was designed by the Horton brothers. Okay, hence the name. Yeah. yeah. Um, it did design off, start off as a, a stealth capabilities. The uh, Norfolk Drummond, they actually rebuilt one of these and uh, they put on um, the stealth coating of the stealth bomber onto this Horton mm -hmm. and they did the radar signature and I think it was like very, very minimal. Okay. Um, a radar return. Yeah. Okay. So, kind. I mean, in some ways, if if they would have had brought it out earlier, because obviously, I, I I I read that they weren't the Horton brothers weren't the only people trying to design an aircraft. No. They, they, he he kind of sent out a message to anyone who yeah, was yeah, involved yeah. in he, he did a lot of that. You know, I need the I need something better. These guys just happened to come up with this design, mm. um, but because of when it was actually constructed, it was kind of a bit too late. To do anything with yeah. it. I mean, if if it would have been sort of five years before, yeah, it could have made effect. It could have made a hell right. of a difference. Well, the range, the, the projection range was a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. That's what the uh, that's what they were looking for. Yeah, a thousand round, round a thousand mile bo bomber. Coming out of World War Two now, and um, obviously off um, from then, we kind of you know get towards the sixties. Uh, B fifty two came out, and uh, obviously that made a lot of difference to and I looked and, and the price was quite cheap really I mean it's only like 52 uh, 55 million I think it is produce now yeah. wow. bearing the fact that you've got the B2 and it's like 737 million wow yeah. quite a contrast so if you've got to think of your your, your budgets yeah you know do you get <laughs> a load of E52s <laughs> or a you few or a few yeah uh, or, or, or one B2 you know yeah. Uh, I think when the, you uh, think of like drone technology now, that yeah. can go in and do the more kind of you know delicate stuff yeah. under the radar stuff. But if you need you know something to drop, essentially just your bombs. I mean, surely that's actually quite a good thing. Well, well I think that's why they're staying in service so long. Yeah, so object, were they projected to stay in service? I couldn't tell. They decided to fly in fifty. Yeah, uh, nineteen fifty-five. I think it was sometime in the twenty twenties. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if anyone at home can yeah. tell us what, uh, when they were planning on retiring. The I don't think it's any time soon. As as they're well high. maintained. Yeah. Um, I mean, we saw them at Fairford yeah. recently. Um, I think they're really well maintained. Um, no, yeah. the I think the bomb loads like thirty thousand pounds. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. Something like that. Yes. And the range is 8,800 miles, I think it is. Wow. That's it. That's exactly why I read it on it as well. Um, okay, so that's obviously the B uh, B-52. So they're moving sort of, uh, we, we're uh, going to touch on, you know, more slightly advanced aircraft than that. So we've got the B-2, uh, sorry, B-1. Uh, the B-1, uh, fish, uh, Essentially, when it came out, was obviously going to be the B two, but it got cancelled because it was yeah. costing too much money. Uh, that's what I read from my facts. No, <laughs> B B two is already developed. No, the B one. Sorry, the B one who came out yeah. before the B two yeah. was essentially the B two, but the costing just oh, went yeah, spiraling yeah. out of yeah, control, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they cancelled the project, and then they moved to the B two then, yeah. um, which was like you said, seven hundred and thirty seven million dollars. Yeah. I mean, that's just a flyer. Yeah. And by the time you have the development and testing, 2.1 billion. Wow. wow. Just on one aircraft. Just to get it. They in. were going to sign off for 135, mm -hmm. and then because of coach budget cutbacks, they reduced it to 21. Wow. Current um, spending on it is 44 billion just on the project. <laughs> it's a lot of pennies. Yeah, the wow. and it's bound to be replaced with the B 21 Raider. Yeah. Which is, Which the is next 500 gen. And million, I think it's. So we've got to move towards modern day uh, aircrafts like the Eurofighters, um, F 52 Raptors, that kind of thing. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, next gen kind of aircraft now. Obviously, it's, that's obviously been out for a while now. Um, and you were talking about, uh, was it uh, Vortex? Was it you talking about the difference? Oh, uh, the different oh vector in thrust. Vector in that's the big 29s, yeah. Yeah. And the new, and the new, yeah, jump yeah. stroke for those, yeah. Do you want to talk more on that one? Um, 
<laughs> they are impressive. Uh, I suppose they're the, uh, the noises, to be fair. The, the, um, the Russians have got their veteran mm, on there. On the big well. 29s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's impressive to see them on videos, like on yeah. YouTube and all that. Yeah. So this is where they can kind of like literally fly along yeah. and then literally just, just completely change. And they yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. literally like, go around like that, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In midair. Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. It's, it's, yeah, the angles that they can get. Yeah. The attack angles is just... Which, which is funny, really, because you think of what the Harrier used to do. Mm. I mean, that when that first came out, you used to think, "Oh my God, you know, this is this is amazing." I've just seen a plane just go straight up and yeah, yeah. and take off, and of, of course, you know, these planes are doing in in, in some ways similar kind of things, mm. but it's obviously not okay. The case. So um, let's talk about um, next gen kind of technologies. So you've got like Lockheed Martin, um, oh, the hypersonic stuff. Yeah, mm. hypersonic yeah. stuff. You've got DARPA. Mm. Uh, who are doing some really ingenious crazy stuff? stuff. Um, I mean, do you want to want to talk a bit on that? Let's see. Let's, let's I know DARPA were uh, developing um, <laughs> <laughs> the new um, hypersonic uh, drone. Yeah. Each one of these drones, they actually flew these things. I mean, they lost control after about two minutes or something. Wow. And uh, they were going to be doing about twelve thousand miles an hour. And they were designed to like take out like big bunker um, facilities, like say say if like a president's in there, mm. they send one of these in there and they destroy the whole. Wow! Really? And they cancelled the project. They built three of them. And that's because yeah. they kept exploding and going. Well, it's and just so hard them. to control. So you know, flying that fast. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't remember what they went with after. They went with some cows after. And. Um, it wasn't as expensive as those. Mm. Impressive though, like yeah. twelve thousand. Well, they re reckon like, you can get it was like um, you go from one end of America like in half hour or something. Wow! With one of these. Um, what one side of America to the other? Yeah, yeah. Thing. in half an hour. Yeah, something like wow. that. Wow. Now that'd be good if obviously commercial aviation. Yeah. Like <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Flight to New York would be literally yeah. what five minutes. <laughs> God, well, you living in transatlantic. Well, they reckon in the next five years mm. that um, what's his name that does Tesla? Um, yeah. <laughs> Tesla guy. Anyone? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Not Elon Musk, is it? Elon That's Musk. Yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah. There you go. Well, he projects in the next five years. You're going to get from America to Britain in half an hour. Yeah. Using these rockets he's building at the moment. Wow. And he's always developing them already. Yeah. Really? At a place called the Gigafactory. Mm -hmm. It's a, a site out in the desert. And he's building all these robots and um, his aircraft are right there. Wow. It's worth having a look at the Gigafactory. Mm. It's definitely worth looking yeah. at. Um, okay. Uh, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, one from uh, David N. Uh, Doy said, uh, uh, "We use the land on carriers. Have you landed on carriers?" No. No. Okay. Okay. That's. What uh, carrier was, did he land on? Not sure. He didn't. He didn't go into any more detail. Okay. Uh, initially on that. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, someone's asked, "Do you speak French?" <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. No. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> we were actually talking about DARP and we were talking about um, aircraft that repairs itself. Yeah, the, I, I hear talk about um, they're going to have a certain metal, it actually mm. repairs itself. Wow. So if it gets battlefield damage, it's on the 6th gen um, fighters that they're developing at the moment, and it's not due out until 2030, I believe. Oh, and they're developing a laser for it. They just signed off a contract to, to build a high energy frequency uh, laser. Right, okay. Uh, and they reckon it's going to, instead of like shoot the aircraft down, it'll cut it in half wow. with this laser. It's kind of a bit James Star Bond ish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not surprising though, because I mean. Well, they've already got a jet at the moment um, that uses a laser. Yeah. Really? It's, it's mounted on a. Um, AC one thirty, I, I believe. It's something it's something on that 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 size. Mm. And it's just a one big laser on 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 this. Um, wow. I have to look at that a bit. Um, mm. 
if I remember rightly what it was. But it's definitely, um, they've already developed it. Mm. It was along with the um, Star Wars project. It's supposed to be t um, bringing down the, um, the nukes. You know, when um, we got, obviously, the Third World War. <laughs> when it kicks they, off. When yeah. it kicks off, yeah. These, these would um, destroy all the nukes. Wow. That was the intention, but yeah. I don't think you have enough time. G.L. Leary says, did you, did you ever work with the Vulcan? <laughs> or experience the Vulcan? The only thing I know about the Vulcan, I, it flew in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also know that um, it could carry nukes. Yeah. Okay. It was our first strike uh, capability, it? Mm, and it's. I think they they found grounded all of them now because yeah, yeah. well, awesome, obviously yeah. Andy's got his Vulcan hey. Vulcan shirt. <laughs> Vulcan to the skies. And they ran out of money. I think it was like five million just to repair it, keep it going in the air, right. and they couldn't get it back That's in. That's a lot, isn't it? That's yeah. Sick. While we're on modern technology, so um, while we were talking about dark, I was doing a bit of research. Yeah. One of their their latest um, defense uh, advanced research projects was uh, the Falcon project, uh, which is force application and launch from continental United States. So this is a hypersonic uh, aircraft, which would uh, which would kind of sit way high in the stratosphere, in the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. and you're talking about going through the stratosphere uh, traveling around the earth uh, literally you know you you're from one side to the other <laughs> probably the kind of speeds we were talking earlier you yeah. know with uh, Elon Musk about get you know how long it should get take you to get from here to America kind of thing um, but I think a lot of it is okay. they were saying about this hypersonic stuff it's like you get so high mm. and then you wait for the earth to come to you Wow. Right, so it's not about Cause, actually cause, projecting cause, yourself, it's about sitting and waiting for it to come to you. Because your Earth's spinning, spinning at 26,000 miles an hour, I believe. I, I can't remember how fast it is. And basically, as the world turns, you wait for the Earth to come a line where you're going, you're going back down. Wow. Can you tell me something else, what they're doing as well? It might be going slightly off aviation, maybe weapons based? Well, they do all sorts. They, um, they're quite heavily involved in a lot of stuff, aren't they? Yeah. They do a drone which flies off the carriers now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think they go into operation in 2020. I think. Okay. It's smaller than the um, the Raptor, and they can obviously get more on there. These. Um, yeah. And is is that the one you were talking about? Which. Um, so is this more of a reconnaissance than dropping no, kind no, of bombs? No, or no, no. It it does its own. It does its own oh, thing. Yeah. And. Uh, you, uh, you were explaining earlier about a, um, I think it was a drone kind of style missile which breaks up into pieces. So it's, you've got like a, one with, you've got like a squadron leader of them. It's called the Wasp. The Wasp, okay. Um, what, what's the Wasp? Just spare everyone else so they can understand why. Right, the Wasp, basically it's, they get launched in a swarm. Mm -hmm. The lead um, Wasp finds a target and it just circles the target until it's destroyed. And I think the weight was on them was like 15 kilograms, yeah, these really things. Wow. And they get launched yeah. from um, but a missile like, launcher. A missile launcher, yeah. like a multi stage missile launcher. Yeah. And they just go boom, boom, boom. And they just go in a swarm. And they also do um, EMP, you know, like uh, electronic, um, basically, docks all the electronics out. Mm. And they would just kind of pound whatever it is, or yeah. attack. Do they attach, or do they, you know, kind of enter and bury themselves? Or I don't know much about it, but basically, I've, I've seen the um, the program that we're using, and they were just circling around the target. I don't know what weapons they use. Okay. Should we talk about conspiracies? That yeah. kind of stuff. He doesn't we love a conspiracy, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just before we do, we just want to say this is obviously just our opinion. They're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say they were necessary <laughs> facts. Um, far away. Uh, well, the SR seventy one. Well, that uh, was made of titanium, mm -hmm. and they didn't have enough uh, titanium, in America. So they had to set up a dummy company in Russia just to well, get the titanium to build the um, to build it. Yeah. Which, which you can imagine back then how would you go you know that's it's quite a big project doing that you know it's not yeah. just a case of all right we'll open an office over there <laughs> oh, well, look, look at the, 
Sign, sign here. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. It's not. It's not like that, is it? It's. I mean, it's. That's a big offer, is it? Yeah. Do you think the Russians were obviously? Obviously, they must have been in on it because they must have had some kind of. Well, it was the CIA front probably we were like saying we need titanium to build something like like an aircraft, like a civil aircraft, or yeah, or. Yeah. Something else with the use of titanium. I, I don't know what what else, but um, I couldn't imagine them being privy to because they wouldn't want someone to build a spy plane and you know, so just yeah. spy on them. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'm sure, if you uh, know about this, and I'm going to put this out there. Um, Denver Airport is it hiding a secret military base? You heard anything about that? I know. Um, they keep on saying about Area Fifty One. Okay. Is that the that's supposed to be the place that all the aliens are and all that. <laughs> what I gather that they did ship a lot of the um, secret bases around the country. So it wouldn't just Area 51. I, I, I couldn't tell you if Denver's a secret base or not. Okay. I know a lot of the um, next gen stuff's flown out of Edwards Air Force Base. Yeah. So if it's next gen, it's going to. If you're going to see the next generation of fighters or whatever, it'd be coming out of there. Mm. Um, Howard Hughes bought up a lot of hotels so he could get his workers out to the uh, airport and yeah. disguising them as tourists. Yeah. So he, he bought up a lot of hotels in there. Um, yeah. And there was one conspiracy, this one book was complaining, um, complaining, reckoning he met Howard Hughes in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And he said, um, "Yeah, we got talking because we're both into aircraft. I was a civil engineer, and this this Howard Hughes was like." And he said, "Oh, I thought he was just a tramp because <laughs> back then Howard Hughes didn't like cleaning. I think he, he just looked like a shovel man." And he said, "He goes, well, where do you want to go?" He took him back to a hotel, mm. and um, he got out the look at the car, and he said, um, "Bye, and what?" And he said. Um, he tried to claim these in his will. Yeah. It, was it three hundred million or something? Was it? You, you reckon he was entitled yeah. to it or something? Wow. Uh, we'll have to do something again, and we'll. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Stuart. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Good, thanks. Um, thanks to everyone uh, for watching us. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, obviously, if you've got any more questions for Andy, leave them in the uh, the comments mm -hmm. below, mm -hmm. and we can ask them later, and we can post them up. Yeah. Uh, on the website or, or on one of our social medias. Uh, if you check the schedule on Facebook and also on our website, jet-junkies.com, you can see when our next show. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for your time, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again. See you later. Bye.